G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well it's Sunday morning here in Australia and it's Rugby League Grand Final Day so I'm already pumped, massive Rugby League fan uh, and I'm even more pumped about some of the things that I'm seeing uh, in the cryptocurrency sort of space. So very interesting article here we can start off with. JP Morgan turns bullish on Bitcoin citing potential long term upside. Now that's pretty big uh, and pretty interesting coming from JP Morgan as Jamie Diamond uh, is well recorded for saying how he didn't believe in Bitcoin at all and thought it was going to zero. You know, a lot of hate on it back in 2017. But now all of a sudden we're in 2020 and obviously they've, you know, done their homework and seen how Bitcoin has a cycle. It's a four year cycle. It's up and down. Uh, but just basically on uh, on an upward trajectory in general. And so all of, a re all of a sudden they're bullish on it. So, you know, better late than never. So well done to JP Morgan for finally uh, realizing the value of it. But I do like their three bullish reasons for why they see long-term potential. So we go down to here. JP Morgan, the $316 billion investment banking giant, said the potential long-term upside for Bitcoin is considerable. So that's pretty big words coming from them. The new optimistic stance towards the dominant cryptocurrency comes after PayPal allowed its users to buy and sell crypto assets. So again, there's so many things happening in this space at the moment that the upside for cryptocurrencies is massive and the downsides, uh, they're minimal. Not to say there's none, and again, none of what I say is financial advice, it's just my own personal opinion. But I think the upside far outweighs, you know, the downside. And again, that's just my personal opinion, but that's why I've gotten into the market uh, and I believe in it because of the things I've seen and read and the history of it. But let's go down here. I like the three main reasons that they gave. First, Bitcoin has to rise 10 times to match the, sec the private sector's gold investment. So gold is seen as that safe haven asset. And cryptocurrency, just to get to that, will have to go up 10 times. So that means, you know, we're at sort of roughly $13,000 now. So that makes it $130,000 uh, Bitcoin just to get to where gold is. And gold, while it's a you know reasonable store of uh, value, it's very hard to, to use. You know, it's not like you can take your gold down to the shop's uh, and buy anything with it. It's very hard to take it overseas with you. Excuse me, and don't get me wrong, Bitcoin has some issues there uh, around uh, its ease of use, but uh, it's easy to take anywhere around the world. Again, these days it can be put on, uh, you know, credit cards. These days it can be put on, uh, you know, ledgers and all sorts of things. They just need to work around some scaling and things like that. But don't get me wrong, there are cards out there that you can kind of spend your gold with as well. Uh, Peter Schiff has had that going for a little while, but you know, we'll have to wait and see how he goes with his court cases at the moment. But you know, again, I don't want to hate on Peter Schiff, although it seems like I've been doing that a little bit lately. So second, cryptocurrencies have high utility. Uh, and they do, they're becoming more widely adopted uh, and there's tons of use cases. It's not just simply Bitcoin anymore, although Bitcoin is the granddaddy of them. And, you know, the first mover advantage it has that Ethereum, uh, you know, is closely snapping sort of at its heels. Uh, and, you know, the flipping may well happen. They were talking about that back in 2017. It didn't happen. And, you know, whether it'll happen this time and, you know, whether it will ever happen, who knows. But, you know, Ethereum is growing quite fast uh, and, and has massive potential upside. But the third one is the one that I, it really sticks with me. BTC could appeal to millennials in the long term. And I don't think could, I think will appeal to millennials in the longer term. It's a digital age. You know, you see the kids these days, they live on their phones and Snapchat and Facebook and Instagram and just everything is digital for them. They're, you know, the chances of them getting into gold, you know, like a metal or i.e. sort of, you know, like a rock, uh, it, it's, you know, not impossible. There's, don't get me wrong, there's going to be some that will, but a majority of them, gold's probably not going to be their thing. Gold may have a really hard time in the new world. 
You know, if we all went back to, you know, the internet and all power and everything failed for whatever reason, gold would all of a sudden become big again, don't get me wrong. But outside of something truly drastic happening, I think digital will be the way to go. Uh, and that's what makes me, you know, really bullish on the upside for Bitcoin and just cryptocurrencies in general. Again, CBDCs, are, they're already on their way. Not that I'm a massive fan of them, but they are a digital currency. I think that is the way of the future gold will have a place i just think it has sort of somewhat limited upside in the longer term i'm not saying in the short term next five to ten years it couldn't uh, go up massively in price i think uh, that's likely but i just think after that it probably has limited upside but jp morgan they have really uh, changed their tune haven't they so very interesting now talked about mode the other day so uh, UK listed mode now holds $1 million worth of Bitcoin. So mode, a London stock exchange listed company that brands itself as a Bitcoin banking app has revealed it now holds around 750,000 pounds or you know, nearly a million dollars worth of Bitcoin after announcing plans this week to put 10% of its cash reserves into the cryptocurrency. Mode has become the first publicly traded British company to put Bitcoin on its books, making the announcement hot on the heels of Jack Dorsey's lead payments uh, company Square. We made the decision to start buying Bitcoin about 10 days ago, Mode founder and executive Jonathan Rowland said, speaking over the phone. We wanted to put our money where our mouth is. Custody of uh, Mode's near $1 million worth of Bitcoin is being shared between US cryptocurrency companies BitGo, which I'm pretty sure by, uh, PayPal are looking at trying to buy, uh, and Coinbase. Mode, which now boasts uh, 25,000 users of its iPhone-only Bitcoin buying app, according to Roland, announced this week it planned to buy Bitcoin as part of a long-term strategy to protect investors' assets from currency debasement, and said it would convert up to 10% of its cash reserves into Bitcoin. Mode stock rose around about 10% on the news, climbing along, climbing along with the Bitcoin price that soared after payments giant PayPal said it would, be, uh, it would begin offering Bitcoin buying and spending services. Earlier this month, Mode raised 7.5 million pounds when it floated on the London uh, market and is aiming to use the funds to reach 1 million users within three years. Roland said he, expect, he expects Mode stock to move with the price of Bitcoin in the future. There's an element of Mode trading on the price of Bitcoin, he said. Mode shares can give people a proxy to owning Bitcoin. It gives people an option to get exposure without buying Bitcoin. Now, that's both good and bad. It's good for people who, again, just don't understand Bitcoin and it's all too hard and they would struggle with ledgers and passphrases and seed codes and all of the rest of it. This is the easiest way. And exactly like PayPal, now people can own Bitcoin without having to worry about the, all the custody issues and again, seed frays and all, all the rest of it. It just makes it easy, particularly for the older generation who would probably really struggle with that. Uh, and even, I guess, people that just, you know, maybe they're from lower socioeconomical areas and, you know, don't have the greatest of education and just struggle with, you know, computers and things like that. If there's a real simpy, simpy, sorry, simple phone app or something like that that does all the hard work for you, then that's what people are going to get into. Hence, I think Mode will do really well. Square Cash App's going to do really well. Uh, you know, PayPal already is an absolute behemoth and they're going to do even better. And that is where the mass adoption is going to come. Look, don't get me wrong. I can, you know, I won't be using PayPal or Mode or Cash App for any of that. You know, I, I, I do it, you know, all, all by myself, basically. You know, I keep it on a couple of different ledgers and, you know, cold wallets and hot wallets and all the rest of it. I just like to have control of it myself because you know I'm not sure about mode but I know with PayPal at the moment once this all starts and I don't think it starts till next year you you don't really own your Litecoin or Ethereum or Bitcoin they hold it for you you can't take it off them you can just trade with it so you can buy it hold on to it and sell it later or you can buy things with it so you know that whole not your keys not your crypto thing definitely stands you know with at least PayPal, whether it's the same with Mode and Cash App, I'm not sure, I haven't used them, but uh, my guess is that's what it will be. But look, it's still super bullish for Bitcoin. It is really, really good news. Now, speaking of Bitcoin, we go over here, Bitcoin whale cluster, 
clusters pinpoint three key levels for BTC price uh, rally to continue. So the, the, the res, resistance and support levels we're looking at, God, I'm struggling with my English on some occasions. So 11857 12,256 and 12,868 dollar levels would likely act as important support and resistance levels. So this is where whales are getting in at the moment. And you can see these big ones here. Now obviously people uh, definitely got in earlier at 10,000. Uh, and then we can see a big accumulation here, big accumulation there, and a big accumulation here as well. So, and even up here, you can see these big hotspots. This is where people have piled in. So when we think about where the Bitcoin price is now, now you know, we're only just sort of over 13,000. It means we don't really have all that far to move. If there was to really be somewhat of a sell-off, it's unlikely that it's suddenly going to drop down to $10,000. That means these whales would sell at a loss and they're, they're unlikely to do that it's not to say it's impossible you know people can still panic and even whales can panic just because these whales got into the markets doesn't mean these are whales that really know anything about the cryptocurrency markets they may well have simply just been given some advice and gone all right i'm going to follow that advice so they could well panic sell or maybe they're just smart buyers who knows it's hard to really say but this is where they've piled into you know, going down to as low as sort of $11,800. So that's only really about a sort of $1,200, $1,400 drop from here. Don't get me wrong, that would hurt from here. But really, it's unlikely that we're going to go much lower than that because it's just being bought up when it gets down to these prices. So again, when it gets down to 12,800 people are buying it, 12,200 people are buying it, 11,800 people are buying it. I mean, I'm still buying uh, Bitcoin right now when I do my sort of weekly or fortnightly buy-ins. Uh, I still think it's undervalued massively. I think, you know, there's massive upside again. Exactly what the upside is, I don't know, I can't tell you. Again, my minimum for where I think Bitcoin is going to get to at the next cycle high is sort of around the 80 to maybe even uh, sort of $90,000 mark. But that could be well undervalued. It could go way over that. Again, you know, 150, 200, 300, 400,000. I, I really don't know. But my kind of bottom price is I think it'll go to around about sort of somewhere between 70. Yeah, let's say 70 to sort of 95,000, I think would be you know, the cycle peak bottom, if that makes any sense. I think that would be the minimum price that it'd get to, somewhere between there. I just don't know exactly where. But for anyone who's a little bit unsure, you know, is this a good time to get in or not? Well, look, we got whales pouring in at only a few hundred dollars to a thousand dollars ago. I would say the chances of it going up are very high compared to the chances of it going down, which are still there. There's definitely a possibility we could go down, but they are much lower. Now, what we do need to keep an eye out for is the good old fear uh, and greed index. It is quite high at the moment. So this is what concerns me a little bit, but it's not, you know, this isn't always an indication, but, you know, I would say more often than not, when things are getting really positive, I'm looking for a, a pullback. And when things get really negative, I'm looking for a pump. But, you know, in certain trends, this is uh, what you want to follow. So let's go over and have a look at BTC at the moment. All right, so here's Bitcoin. So we have had a really big pump up. And again, this has happened before and then it got really choppy and we sold off. So I am just watching for maybe we have a bit of a pullback and again, come back and maybe test this twelve and a half thousand. Maybe even we come down here and test kind of, you know, roughly the twelve thousand dollar mark. That that is quite a possibility. But you know, my gut feeling says we're probably going to continue upwards. We're waiting for Monday at the moment, so it's a little bit quiet over the weekend. There's no, you know, sort of traditional uh, in institutional buyers at the moment. It would be more just, you know the average day Joe, and we haven't had too much of a sell-off over the weekend, although, you know, we had this little red candle here, and considering where this peak was, you know, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But I think institutional buyers are sort of 
buying in and I think that FOMO is really going to start uh, and I think it started here so we've broken out of here so if we are to have a bit of a sell-off I really think we're only going to come back to a roundabout here I don't think we're going to come much lower than a twelve and a half thousand again remembering we went over here people are buying at twelve thousand eight hundred people are buying at twelve thousand two hundred and people are buying and this is Wales they're accumulating at these levels so when we go over to Bitcoin here I just I don't see it coming much lower again if it gets to 12,800 there's whales who just bought in there if it gets down to 11,000 oh, sorry 12,200 so we get down to around about sort of here whales were buying in here so I just don't see it dipping too much it could definitely dip down to here and again maybe here but then the $11,800 level so again, this is where people were piling into it. So if there is to be a correction, I don't think it's going to be that massive. It might just bring us back to this kind of average here, but it won't take us long to just start rocketing up again. Because again, even those whales, if they see it come back to this price, they're just going to go, this is another good opportunity to get back in. And the FOMO starts it here. Now that we've broken this, you know the institutional buyers who are still unsure are probably now going oh we just got to wait and see and i spoke about this before and i'll continue to speak about it again there's institutional buyers here who are just unsure they are waiting for this if this cracks they are going to pile in and we are creeping towards that and again this trend line here i just don't see it being broken anytime soon at all so we're watching this once we break this and it's not just a fake out so we, what we don't want to see is it kind of push up here and then just roll over and come back down that is uh, not where people are going to pile in so get rid of that what we're looking for is something where this goes up above comes back retests it and starts to do this and once it starts to do this, it is going to move very, very quickly. So sorry, I'll well, get rid of that. So this is what we're sort of looking for. Where it breaks above, there's probably going to be a pullback and it'll come back and retest it. And then once it starts to move, this is where the true FOMO starts. This is where the institutional buyers who are just unsure and they still think that this is just going to kind of, you know, maybe tip here and then just roll over and come all the way back down here. Once this breaks above, comes back and retests it, that's when we're going to start to move very, very fast. In my opinion, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. So that's what I'm looking for. All right, let's go over and have a look at the markets. So again, we're still moving up even over the weekend. We were down at 400 billion, now we're 404 billion. Gas prices, they just keep getting lower and lower and that is great. That BTC dominance, it's staying around that 60%. I think it will start to grow once we crack that 13,000, sort of $800, $14,000 mark. I think this is gonna go to somewhere between 65 and maybe even 75%. But who knows, we'll just have to wait and see. But let's have a look. Bitcoin, so in seven days, you know, 15%, that's pretty good. Ethereum, 11%. Let's have a look. What are the big movers? So Ample Fourth, Theta Network, they've done really well. And then there's just some reasonable gains in all the others. But look at seven days. The last seven days have been amazing. Litecoin, I mean, you know, what a run. Well done. Quant Network, they have teamed up with uh, Ripple. So that's some pretty big news for them. Filecoin, you know, yeah, maybe they've found the bottom. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. What are the big losers? So there's not really any big losers in the last 24 hours. It's all single digit kind of stuff. So nothing too bad. But uh, I'm not sure what they are, but they haven't done too well over seven days. But generally just some sort of, you know, single digit sort of losses for those. You know, really hoping that Uniswap uh, has found a bottom here, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but generally not too bad overall. Now, this is what I really wanted to get into. I'm a massive uh, synthetics uh, fan. I've really, you know, loved everything that they've done. Let's go over to here. They have been on a downward trend for a while, 
but like not that long, basically sort of September. So the last sort of month or so, you know, well, 14th of August. So, so a little bit over a, a month, a month and a half. And on this is the BTC level. So I am expecting this to sort of continue to drop, but I'm looking for it to find some support around here. So this is against BTC, and that's because BTC is moving at the moment. So even if the dollar value goes up on Synthetics Network, uh, I think the BTC dominance is going to drop for a while, but this is sort of coiling, and I do think it's going to get to around here. And so if we move out, I think this is where it's going to find some confluence, and then it's going to start to move again. I don't think Synthetics is even remotely anywhere near dead. I think it's just most of the DeFi projects at the moment are all having uh, quite a cool off period. Uh, and again, this is against the BTC. So this is what I'm looking for, that it finds some confluence around here. But the US dollar chart is what's really uh, interesting to me. So we go to synthetics on the USD. It has some confluence here. So this is where it's already bounced off it. So it was around about $3 and it pumped up. Now I'm just waiting to see if it's gonna roll over. But we see this wedge forming here, and it almost perfectly lines up with sort of, yeah, three dollars, two dollars and sort of seventy cents ish. So I'm not sure if it's going to make it down to here, but I'm just waiting to see. We may have already reached the bottom on the US dollar value, and now we're waiting to see if it's going to break out of this wedge. I'm not really sure. But I'm waiting to see if it maybe it comes back down to again around about the three dollar level. So we reject off here, come down, and again we either find some support off this three dollar level and then break out and start to move up, or it keeps breaking down until it gets to around about here. Because again, it's kind of that two dollar sort of sixty seventy dollar mark. Uh, it has a little bit of history there. We can see over here uh, it was used as support. Uh, yeah, there's just a bit of confluence around here. But if it doesn't, then unfortunately we could be coming way back down to here around kind of the 70 cent mark. Now, I don't think it's going to do that in all fairness, but it does have a fair bit of history uh, here of, you know, support uh, and resistance, more sort of support really. Uh, it used this as support a lot before it really started to go onto that run. But Again, I'm thinking more sort of around here, the $3 mark. And again, maybe we've already missed it. Uh, if it breaks out of this uh, wedge here and starts to move its way up, then I'm just going to get back into uh, some more synthetics. That's what I'm looking for. I'm still uh, really bullish on synthetics network, and I'm just waiting to see where it, yeah, whether it breaks out of this sort of downward trend. And if it does, then I'll be buying some and getting on board. Uh, and if it doesn't, then I'm just going to be waiting to see if it finds some support back down around the $3 level. Or again, maybe we come down to that kind of $2.60, $2.70 mark. And again, if it doesn't find support there, then really we're looking at, you know, maybe a dollar something, a dollar eighty something, maybe a dollar sort of 14. And then again, we're really getting back down to where it was. Uh, a number of months ago. I don't see that happening though. I think Synthetics Network, it may have already found its bottom and that may have been it, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. But I think there's still massive upside for Synthetics Network uh, in this next sort of run. I just think the altcoins aren't gonna do too much at the moment. Bitcoin's gonna have its moment and it's gonna shine. Now, last but not least, we go over to Ethereum. So Ethereum is at a real sort of uh, key support uh, resistance level at the moment so it's up above it at the moment but kind of that $400 mark uh, it's an interesting place so it's resistance here it was a bit of support here resistance and then we pumped up above and then we've just really struggled to get above $400 for a long time now we are above it at the moment but if we zoom out See, we couldn't even get up there it fell over and then this is going way back to the last bull run it was resistant. Uh, it was support here for a while, acted as a bit of a resistance before we pumped up, and then it was support, and then we fell down down below. So we've really struggled with this since back in August of 2018. So we come all the way across to here, and now this is where we are. So we've broken above it, and we've just got to wait to see if this upward trend uh, is going to last, or is it going to roll over and fall under, and maybe we come back down and test that $250 mark again. I don't think that's going to happen, 
but I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen because I, I just don't know. I, I am I'm confident, mildly confident is probably a better word. Yeah, I'm mildly confident that this is now going to be support, that we're not going to dip down below anytime soon. And if we do, that we're just going to sort of come back down here and continue to use this uh, upward trend line as support and then we'll get back above. And again, it's only because of this fear and greed index that we're so leaning towards the bullish side that there may well be a sell-off and we come sort of back over here. But no guarantees. Again, there's a lot of enthusiasm and I believe uh, institutional buying getting on board. Again, Grayscale was buying up Ethereum. I think you're going to find other companies, uh, institutional buyers going to be buying up Ethereum as well. It's not just going to be all uh, Bitcoin news. I think Ethereum is going to do exactly the same. Uh, so yeah, four hundred dollar mark. It's a very key level for Ethereum. Waiting to see, and I'm happy to buy uh, Ethereum at four hundred dollars. I I have no issues. Once we start to break really above that kind of five hundred dollar mark, so once we're up sort of around here, um, I'll still be putting some money into Ethereum, but I'll probably be uh, putting more money into uh, some of the lower cap alts at that stage. That's my plan anyway. All right, Sunday morning, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I need to get myself mentally prepared for the Rugby League Grand Final. Uh, for anyone who's watching from overseas who doesn't understand Rugby League, uh, it's a little bit like gridiron, uh, just without all the pads and stuff, although they do wear some pads, but definitely no helmets. Uh, that's not true. I guess we've got uh, helmet-like things. They're called head guards. They're just uh, a bit of foam around your head as opposed to a full-on helmet. But anyway, I'm rambling on. I'm, I'm excited about the Rugby League Grand Final. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. And I'll see you next time.